Stay safe online with Glasswire. Hey, what's up everyone? And today we're taking a look, or rather another look at the cheapest water cooler unit you can buy uh, right here in 2020. Now, this time last year, check out that video right there, I went ahead and grabbed the cheapest water cooler unit I could buy off of Banggood. And, well, we set everything up, made a couple videos, got some sweet B-roll. And well, I kind of just left the computer running under the stairs and then it got moved out to the garage and then back under the stairs. I basically forgot about it for an entire year and I only remembered about it because the power supply must have blown up or gone weird, something like that, because the magic blue smoke escaped, it turned off and I could smell burnt electronics. So I yanked it out this morning and realized, oh, this has been running for a year. So I wanted to see what kind of temperatures we get and what exactly is the life of the cheapest water cooling unit you can buy on the internet. And I don't know how much you can see by the mess behind me, it's definitely been an interesting investigation. Now, before you watch this video, again, if you haven't checked it out, go check out the original series where I went ahead and set up the computer, did some original benchmarks and stuff like that. So uh, let's go ahead and take a bit of a look. Alrighty, so just while the computer's getting its act together, I don't actually know what it's doing. It hasn't posted yet, but it posted before. So it's doing its thing, I don't know, the lights are coming on and off anyway. Uh, so um, just thought I'd pick up the camera and we have a bit of a look around. So one thing, if you are purchasing this kit that I did find was the uh, little included rubber isolator thing, Bobo. I think we can kind of see it in here if we get some more ISOs going on in the camera. Uh, so this little guy right here, um, the stickiness wore off after like, I think it was about three months or so. And seeing that we're a year in, it's now completely just flopping around. So um, maybe grab yourself an aftermarket little insulator thingy. Um, that's something that I did notice. And also too, we'll get to this in a bit more, but I did notice there is some, I wouldn't say leaking, but almost leaking around the gasket. And I don't know if we can really see on this angle, but uh, we can see some slight corrosion. Uh, camera's not even going to focus on this, but there is some slight corrosion on that copper. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's some issues with the radiator as well, because this is a mixed metal loop from memory. I think this is an aluminium um, uh, radiator and they're obviously copper blocks. So in terms of metals wise, it is going to be a mixed metal loop. So <laughs> not so great, but I'm not seeing any leaks anywhere. Um, if we kind of get on this angle down here and have a bit of a look under here, it's not really looking like there's drips coming off anything. Um, so it looks like it's stayed sealed for the time, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's, you know, six months away from a leak or something along those lines. That said, if you own a water-cooled system, you probably should be servicing it quite a bit more regularly than those with um, air-cooled systems. So, I'm going to get this to post, I'll run some benchmarks, and then we can get into ripping this thing apart. Alright, so performance numbers time. In our original video, well, here are the original stats, and uh, taking a look here on the CPU, we got 59 degrees and 48 degrees on the GPU? Hang on a second. This thing's been running for a year with literally no service. I haven't changed the fluid. I haven't done anything to it other than blow out a little bit of dust because it was really looking bad and I didn't want to put that on camera. I haven't done anything to this damn thing and it's not running that much more. That's like four degrees on the CPU more and five degrees on the GPU. What? This thing is a mixed loop that I just haven't really cared about. Surely there must be a ton of gunk and stuff floating around inside and the corrosion must be bad. Well, let's actually rip things apart. Right, so I've pulled apart all the little bits and pieces. There's a couple things that I do want to have a look here, um, especially at the blocks themselves and the radiator are two main things we're going to have a look at. First though, you may notice the uh, tubes themselves, <laughs> they're... Uh, they're stained. Um, so I believe this is just a kind of like a standard thing that happens with all pastel um, kind of fluids, especially these kind of ones. They've all stained kind of like this bluey, greeny, I guess the best way to describe it is pastel. Um, the stuff that makes it opaque 
obviously stained in the tubes. Same thing over here with the um, reservoir itself. That's meant to be like fully crystal clear. Obviously you can see that that is uh, clearly not, but on the plus side, the seals did not fail. Um, so seals on both ends of this reservoir didn't fail. There is absolutely no leaks, uh, which is a great thing to see. Um, they are done up pretty tight, although once you do open them up, um, so the actual O-rings themselves right here, yeah, they're not too bad. Um, we can see fluids starting to creep out, um, which was a bit of a shame. And again, we just got that pastel kind of, uh, build up on the edges, which is a bit of a shame, but, um, yeah, they probably had another six or so months in them before I started having some more issues. So speaking of issues, let's look at the block. Okay, so I've gone ahead and grabbed the tools there. Now, if we grab this camera right here and have a bit of a closer look at this O-ring, which will be a bit of a pain to get into focus, come on. So going ahead, having a look at the actual O-rings on the fittings themselves, they're not bad. They're not cracking. Um, they're not dried out or anything like that. They're still, uh, you're kind of still the same um, feeling silicon. So that's not too bad there. That's the same case for all of the, uh, the O-rings. They have been stained blue. Um, they were white when I first set this, uh, this loop up. I do remember that. Um, so all the gaskets and O-rings on this kit are white. So they'll obviously grab whatever color your fluid is. Um, so obviously it's been doing its job, but... Um, yeah, not dried, not cracked, other than the inside, which is full of the uh, pastel-y kind of stuff, but that's sort of a given when you're using a pastel type fluid or opaque kind of fluid. Obviously, if I was using um, just distilled water, that probably would have been maybe a little bit better in some people's opinion, but whatever. We can go ahead and start yanking this block apart. All right, so I've just gone ahead and uh, taken off some of the fluid. I just kind of shook it out, but having a look at this, it is uh, not looking great at all. So we can see that the um, gasket did a okay job for the majority of it, but we do see over in this corner, we did get uh, some leakage outside of the gasket. So you can kind of see where this kind of hard ring uh, is, is where the little red O-ringy gasket thing was. And it does look like we got some kind of uh, excess spillage as there is corrosion and liquid kind of outside here. Um, same thing down at this corner and this corner is not too bad. Um, it looks like the, it did a fairly decent job. So we would be expecting something like this rather than something like that. And, um, this corner is probably the best out of all of them, but oof, this corner is looking really gross with little buildups and stuff. Looking at the top plate here. Um, so if we remember the fluid was transferring from this side to this side. So in here, out there. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. There's definitely some buildup of green kind of gunk on the, uh, that side there. And we can see, just grab my screwdriver. We can see again, uh, here where we had some like leakage on, uh, either side. Um, and there is some blue buildup from the fluid right there. So that's a bit of an interesting one. Um, so that's the CPU block that was, uh, <laughs> not super great, but the actual fins themselves, other than the little bit, uh, let me grab the screwdriver. So other than a little bit of um, gunk in here, the actual fins themselves don't look too bad. You could probably clean this up if it was in a, a more expensive block, but seeing it's not, it's probably not worth it. So uh, let's pull apart the GPU one and have a look there as well. So GPU side, not gonna lie, this is actually looking really good from the teardown. So having a look here at the, uh, the acrylic piece, that's looking pretty clean. I was actually expecting the CPU block to look more like this um, than it did. So if we remember the way the loop was configured, um, the fresh fluid would, or rather the um, fluid straight from the pump and reservoir come in here, out there into the CPU, which came in here, out there. Um, so I was actually expecting this to be not as good, but having a look at those fins, there is a little bit of buildup. Uh, so if we have a quick little scan sort of over all those fins, there is a, a tiny bit of buildup, but nothing compared to what we uh, see over here on the CPU side. And there's like massive deposits of just, just junk uh, on that one. So yeah, those are those two blocks. But the other big thing I do want to have a look at is the pump itself and Mr. Radiator. But I think to have a look inside there, we're going to need to visit our friend, the Angle Grinder. But let's yank that one apart and have a look. 
All right, so I've yanked the uh, pump apart, which isn't looking too bad at all. The only real noticeable thing that I did see here uh, was the back end of the impeller. So that's the impeller and little blades down here. And uh, if we have a look at the end bit of that, there is a fair bit of kind of gunk um, there. Although not terrible, again, it's just that kind of pastel-y stuff. So all in all, that's not looking too bad. The actual acrylic part, again, not looking too shabby. Um, all the seals are all perfectly fine. Um, this side, this little rubber uh, seal, that's perfectly fine as well. Still flexible, not dried out, anything like that. So that's still okay. No problems there. Um, the fitting here, the little O-ring in there, exactly the same as the others that were over there. So still perfectly usable and serviceable. No problems there. Um, the only real problem with the pump that I saw, other than it being obnoxiously loud and this little uh, bit not really doing its job, um, yeah, all in all, this part hasn't been too bad so far. CPU block has really been only the uh, problem, but um, let's go out to the garage and visit our friend, the angle grinder, and um, let's chop this guy up. And uh, also, too, I thought we'd have a bit of a look at the fluid itself. So, honestly, there's not really that much growth in here. I was expecting quite a bit of growth and particles and bits and pieces, but honestly, there isn't that much. That kind of light green and sort of textury things you're seeing in there is actually just the uh, container I'm using. It's not the actual fluid itself. So if we have a look more so in this corner right here, well, there's a bit of hair there, but um, all in all, it's actually tracking really, really decently for what it is. I mean, it's a year old fluid. Uh, I wouldn't expect too much from it, but there's no no real growth. There's a couple bugs that have flown in there since I started recording this video, but no kind of like clumps and stuff that we saw in this video right here. So the uh, plan's pretty simple. I've got the uh, radiator here and I've got my friend uh, Jigsaw and uh, Angle Grinder just over there in the background. And the plan is I'm going to take off the two end tanks, so at the top and also two at the bottom of the radiator, just so we can have a look at what kind of build-up is actually going on in there. And then we might just slice this in half just to have a look at what's uh, going on inside there. Now, yes, I did wash this radiator before we got into this because it was really, really gross. Um, so we're going to start slicing, yeah, two end tanks. And uh, we'll just chop it sort of in half after that and see what we get inside. So now that I've gone ahead and played around with Jigsaw and our angle grinder and taken a look inside of this guy, the radiator actually looks pretty much fine. Um, other than the little bits of aluminium flakes that have sort of come in there from obviously chopping this thing up, there's no real growths or anything like that. Taking a look at this shot from the video that we pulled apart a Corsair AIO, there's more growths in that thing than there is in our particular custom loop. Now, yes, that one was quite a bit older than our particular unit here, but uh, all in all, it's not been that bad. The radiator is not blocked up. I was honestly expecting um, a bunch of that corrosion that we saw on the uh, CPU block to have made its way down into the radiator and block up some of those fin channels. But hey, looking at the end tanks themselves, looking at the actual fins, um, they're not really that bad at all. And if we take a look at all the O-rings, the blocks and everything like that, honestly, I could have probably left it for another six months without touching it and probably gotten away with it. So that brings me to the question or the sort of statement, should you go ahead and buy one? And um, honestly, my original statement was probably not just because of some of the parts were so cheap. And my statement still now is probably you shouldn't. But if you've got an older system that you just want to play around with some water cooling, they're definitely not a bad piece of kit. Um, seeing that I just didn't care for it and it actually lasted for a fair bit of time. Again, I wouldn't go putting this on like a 2080 Ti or, you know, your latest end uh, AMD Ryzen chips or Threadrippers. But I have to say again, for that old rig, maybe you've got your last computer, you've just upgraded to your new one and you've got your old one kicking around. You want to just play around with custom water cooling. You've never touched it, never really seen it and just want to play around with it. It does uh, include basically everything you need in that kit, with the exception of some uh, VRM heatsink little, these guys. Um, it doesn't come with any, though you probably can get away with it. I got away with it, no problems there. But again, you probably want to go ahead and add some there. So um, all in all, I'm genuinely very surprised with just how well this uh, whole setup actually stood up to the test of time. Again, 
eh, it's one of those things I wouldn't put on my main sort of system. But again, if you're having some fun playing around with an older system, this is an absolute awesome place to start. Yes, it's mixed metals, but throw some decent fluid in there. And uh, as we found, there really hasn't been too much of a problem. But guys, let me know what you think down in that comment section. Have you picked up one of these kits since I last made these videos or are you more interested now? Do let me know down below. Um, also to hit me up if you have any questions. Um, maybe I forgot to mention something in this video. Do let me know down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them there. And if you want to pick up one of these kits, I'll leave them linked down in the description box. Guys, thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.